Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Naomi Potter. This is Peanut. Did you know that 48% of women are worried that HRT causes breast cancer and one in 10 believe it's unsafe to use? As a menopause doctor, I see this in clinic where there is so much concern over HRT and the risks. Today, I'm going to be walking you through everything you need to know about HRT from the risks to treatment to best practices. What actually is HRT? HRT means hormone replacement therapy and when we refer to HRT we are normally meaning estrogen, progesterone and sometimes testosterone. Estrogen declines during the menopause and so does progesterone because you stop ovulating and testosterone declines throughout a woman's life and it's these three hormones that we use as part of an HRT regime to relieve symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. How does HRT work? HRT can help relieve almost all of the symptoms that are associated with perimenopause and menopause. The the trouble is though, it's not always a quick fix and it doesn't always work and it certainly doesn't necessarily work quickly. Um, But if you are having symptoms because of low estrogen or because of low testosterone, then the theory is by replacing those hormones, your symptoms should disappear. We have hormone receptors throughout the whole body and the hormones that you would normally have premenopausally will all impact on all of those organ systems. When your hormone levels drop, you develop symptoms. And so by replacing those hormones with HRT, these symptoms can then lessen because you're you're basically tricking your body into thinking that you've got those hormones still around. When should I consider taking HRT? So there's no set time for starting HRT. You, Some women like to prepare and want to start HRT as soon as they're first symptomatic and others want to wait until their symptoms are significantly impacting their life and others don't want to use it at all. Um, If you are very young, so if you're under the age of 45, and definitely if you're you're under the age of 40, as long as there's no contraindication, then you should start HRT when you're younger, because uh, it helps protect bones and the cardiovascular system. um, And it's important that we replace the hormones that would normally be there. If you are older, if you're over the age of 45, then really the decision is, is is much more grey and it's up to you. Um, Some women want to know whether they can start HRT when they are post-menopausal. And what we say at the moment is that there's there's about a 10-year window where it's considered the optimal time to start. And if you're 10 years post-menopause, then it just needs a bit more of a a conversation. Um, But there's, there's no hard and fast rules. It's about what works for you, whether you have the um, inclination, whether your symptoms are bad enough um, and whether you want to make it as a, you know, as as a health choice. It's a very individual decision. What different HRT options are out there? If what someone wants to start HRT, there are a number of different products that they can use. Um, the, The products that we like to use first and foremost are the oestrogen through the skin, which we call transdermal oestrogen. And typically they come either as a patch or a gel or a spray. And there's no right or wrong. It's very much patient preference. Um, The patches mean that you can apply them and then only change them twice a week. And some women like that because you're less likely to forget something that you change twice a week than something that you need to use every day. Um, Other women don't like having something stuck to them and they prefer something more discreet. And in which case you can use a spray or a gel. The gel, some women um, don't like it because it is a bit gloopy and a bit sticky and can take a while to dry. And in the winter, it can feel quite cold. Uh, But it's a good product if you want to use... um, kind of half doses or start at a very low dose and work up Um, it's also a very good product for absorption Um, whereas the spray is a bit harder to to do kind of half doses but um, it's more easily it's more easily absorbed in the sense that it dries much faster so it tends to be a kind of like a nicer product to use Um, 
so it's really it, it's it's so individual and you have a conversation with a patient and they and they tell you what they what they think that they'll prefer and then sometimes they might change afterwards if they try something and they don't like it so much or they've seen something that their friends are trying and so if you have a uterus and you're using those transdermal products then you need to use a progesterone or progestogen as well what we normally do in the vast majority of women is either recommend a morena that some women have a morena anyway from contraception uh, or we add in what we call um, a micronized progesterone in the form of eutrogestan which is a, a progesterone capsule that you take for two weeks of the month if you're still having periods or you take every single day if you are post menopausal you can use topical estrogens as well which are which come in the form of creams um pessaries gels and even as a ring and this can act this is um a local estrogen that just acts on the vulvo vaginal tissues to help with symptom with local symptoms so symptoms like urinary symptoms or vaginal dryness or soreness uh, pain on intercourse um, and you can use those either alone or in conjunction with the systemic um estrogen patches uh, sprays or gels testosterone is another hormone that we replace as part of hrt so currently testosterone is only licensed for use in women with a low testosterone that are that's already that are already on a, on estrogen hrt um with a distressingly low libido and um you diagnose this on the basis of a blood test so a low serum test testosterone level on a blood test um there is a lot of discussion about whether testosterone actually helps with a w much wider array of symptoms including uh, loss of joy get up and go confidence brain function power strength joie de vivre um so a wide array of symptoms but we don't have data at the moment to support that and that's where the problem lies uh and so we often we take a view um and that if women still don't feel quite right then we may prescribe testosterone um but make on the understanding that this is off license and um it may not have an impact and also on the understanding that testosterone if if it's obtained privately then it has a cost implication uh so there's the cost of the appointments there's the cost of blood tests and there is the cost of the medication itself because that's not covered um on the nhs prescription charges what are the benefits of taking hrt so HRT, as well as helping with symptoms, can also have a positive uh, impact on bone density. Um, we know that bone density in postmenopausal women who are not on HRT uh, declines very quickly without estrogen being around. And if you replace the estrogen with HRT, you prevent that bone loss. And in some, in some cases, you even replace lost bone and you can improve bone density. Um, we also know that it's it's cardio protective, and what that means is it um, it helps with the vessels that supply the um, the heart muscle, as well as um, being protective to the rest of your vessel system, which means that. Uh, there's things, um, there's vessels in the brain that can clog up, um, and that can cause something called vascular dementia. Um, it can cause strokes, and so by having these vessels protected by estrogen, can lower the risk of both vascular dementia and and strokes. So we know it. We we know it also protects. Um, for uh, lipid metabolism so that's fat metabol metabolism and cholesterol and sugar metabolism and it keeps your metabolism in a in a in a kind of pre-menopausal state which is um, a, a kind of healthier uh, position to be in in terms of where of, of how you transport sugar and and glucose so it has a number of a number of known health benefits there's probably a, a number of unknown health benefits and certainly there's emerging data that it might protect um, a general kind of cognitive function and we're just waiting for more data on that um, and there's also some data to suggest that it decreases overall morbidity and mortality um, but we just need we need lots more data to to show where the true benefits of hrt lie but so far it's it's promising data that it's beneficial are there risks involved in taking hrt the risks of hrt are um often talked about far more than the benefits the the first is, is simple side effects so with anything that you that you 
take so medication hormones there is always a risk of side effects and side effects are relatively common but they're not normally very severe and they normally settle over time on their on their own um, a bit of nausea breast tenderness sometimes headaches and sometimes irregular or erratic bleeding are probably the most common side effects but they normally settle within three to six months of starting HRT if they don't then there are things that can be done uh, mostly it's just changes to um, either the the type of product that's used or the dose that's used um, and that can easily uh, sort out those side effects in terms of more serious risk there is always the concern that HRT causes breast cancer um, but our current evidence suggests that there is not very much increased risk when using the modern HRT types. And when we compare those risks to those of, say, you drinking two glasses of alcohol a day, then two, drinking two glasses of alcohol a day is more risky than using HRT. Being obese is much, much more risky in terms of developing breast cancer than using HRT. The patient information leaflet that comes with a box of any type of HRT makes for extremely frightening reading and most of it is untrue. Um, even in the topical estrogen boxes it uh, reports risks of um, deep vein thrombosis so there's those clots in the legs that goes to the lung strokes heart attacks breast cancer and that's just simply simply not true using oral estrogen can slightly increase the risk of having clots in the legs that can uh, that can go to the lungs but even that is a very low risk and far far less risk than being pregnant for example so hrt is very very safe um, just like being female is very safe we've had all these hormones in our bodies all of our reproductive lives. Um, and what using HRT does is it just extends the length of time that those hormones are around. And I think it's really important to just put those risks in perspective. Things like um, processed meat, so bacon, salami, they all cause cancer, but they don't come with warning labels. Alcohol causes cancer, it doesn't come with a warning label. Um, and using HRT is is less risky than both of those two things. So it's just all, it's very important to just make sure that we put these risks in perspective. So HRT is suitable for the majority of women, but there are some women that can't take HRT. And that would be, especially if you have um, active breast cancer, particularly if that, bre if that breast cancer has got hormone receptors on it. There are also certain types of ovarian cancer that you would choose that you would be advised to not use HRT with. But in most other cases, you can use transdermal HRT. Can I change my course of HRT? We don't really like women chopping and changing and starting HRT and stopping HRT, often because what that can do is cause problematic bleeding and when you have women with erratic bleeding or unscheduled bleeding you are you're, you're you're kind of forced to investigate and then that can mean that we investigate people unnecessarily um so we like women to just to try different regimes for at least three months to see whether they whether they whether it's the right fit or not some women choose to start hrt and then for whatever reason they stop for a couple of years and then go back to it and that's absolutely fine it's not like antidepressants whereby if you start on an antidepressant you really need to give it six months to work you haven't got you're not going to get a kind of rebound worsening symptoms um, but it is best to not chop and change too much because otherwise you can't really assess what benefits you're having, and potentially um, what side effects you're getting. Um, so a good a good stretch is is good, but it's not it's it's not essential. If you're enjoying this conversation so far, please do press the follow button on whatever platform you're listening on. Please do share it with a friend who you think would benefit too. What are the signs that my HIT might not be working? So HRT can um, can be tricky to get right. Some women find that well, it's, a lot of women are really they pin they they pin their hopes on feeling better, and sometimes it doesn't work straight away, um, and sometimes it can work and then it can stop working. So when you start HRT, you're at a particular point in time where your ovarian function is 
doing what it's what it's doing and when you use when you top up with hrt you're topping up your tank of estrogen further down the line your east your ovaries are going to be doing different things and they may well be producing less estrogen so it's understandable that a dose that was previously sufficient to control your symptoms then it is no, is no longer sufficient to control your symptoms because your overall amount of estrogen is less because your ovaries are producing less um, so that's one reason why your HRT might stop working. For others, it can simply be a matter of not absorbing properly. Um, so some women's skin just doesn't seem to absorb very well, th- um, you know, the transdermal products, so the the um, patches, gels and sprays. And by changing product, that can impact the absorption so that you do suddenly start to absorb and your symptoms and your symptoms get better. Sometimes it's nothing to do with either the dose or the product. It's, it's external factors so if you haven't stored your hrt or or your hrt has not been stored correctly so say it's been transported and it hasn't been kept at the right temperature um or you're on holiday and you've been in the sea all day um or you've been using sun cream and you've put your your hrt over the top of it or you've been in a hot tub there's all sorts of reasons why your hrt might not absorb so well and so if you've suddenly noticed that you haven't got the same symptom control then it's worth thinking could it be one of those reasons as to as to why um and then adjusting accordingly what alternatives are there to hrt there are lots of alternatives to HRT uh, and they fall into different categories. So there's the lifestyle changes, there's psychological therapies, there's uh, herbal options and there's non-hormonal medications. And often these can be used all together. Uh, so the lifestyle changes are things like looking at your nutrition, looking at exercise, avoiding alcohol, avoiding caffeine, avoiding sugar the psychological therapies have been uh, are evidence-based so they do work so particularly cbt which is cognitive behavior therapy can very much work for mood disorders and even hot flushes and night sweats Um, and uh, we often suggest that to women who have a history of breast cancer Um, and there's another type of therapy called um, hypnotherapy which can also help in a similar way to cognitive behavior therapy Um, and that can be that can be very beneficial there are a number of herbal options um, with limited evidence but um, certainly a lot of women report a benefit whether that's placebo effect or not um, we, we they do report a benefit um, my advice to you about about that would be just to research your product carefully, make sure that there's no interactions with any other medication that you're taking, and don't spend a fortune on them because they shouldn't cost they shouldn't cost lots and lots of money. Um, and finally, there are non hormonal medications that you can get on prescription from your doctor that work to target menopausal symptoms that do not involve the use of hormones. Um, so there is uh, a new drug out um, that is awaiting its NHS license called Vioza or Fiesolinitant, which can work to help uh, reduce hot flushes very effectively. We use other medications like um, escitalopram and oxybutynin, um, which can help reduce uh, hot flushes and night sweats. So it, there are there are a, a range of, of options for women who can't or don't want to use HRT and and the best place for you to get this information is from your doctor. How do I find out more about HRT? For anybody who is researching using HRT, the best place that you can get this um, from is your doctor. So you can go to your GP and if you uh, have a choice about which GP you can see, I would ask to see a doctor in your practice who is an expert in, in women's health. Um, and even they, they even sometimes have menopause, menopause specialists now. So rather than getting prescriptions uh, online or um, from a friend, it's best to get medicines from your doctor that knows you knows your past medical history knows your family history and can advise advise you based upon your symptoms and your background thank you so much for watching if you would like any more information on menopause or hrt then please do visit our content hub which is on the website which is menopausecare.co.uk